How are you? Can't believe it, we've made it this far. Last day of CES, last presentation, so I'm quite honored. Um, I'm, I'm incredibly lucky. I've worked for Nikon for 33 years, and as Mike said, I was general manager of Nikon House in Rockefeller Center, and I've had many jobs over the years uh, leading up to what I'm doing now, which is the senior product manager for Nikon DSLR, Nikkor lenses, and speed lights. So what that means is that I get to play with all the toys before all of you do. I get to learn about all the toys before all of you do. But as Mike said, I, I really love photography and I love taking pictures. My whole life is about taking pictures. And so it's a natural mix that travel photography, taking pictures, and telling story uh, come about. So one for the road, Tales of the Traveling Photographer. I love telling stories, I love traveling. And photography helps me tell those stories in a way that I never dreamed of before. One of my favorite things to take pictures of is architecture. I do it everywhere I go. I'm intrigued by great architecture, not so great architecture, terrible architecture, but I love the symmetry and the elegance of architecture. So it's one of the things I love taking pictures of no matter where I go. I also love taking pictures of cities, skylines, twilight, sun up, everywhere in between. I'm fascinated with cities how they shape where we live, and how they shape uh, the surroundings around them. I also love landscape photography. Here's a shot I took out in Jackson Hole with the D7500, which is what I'm going to talk about today, shooting with the D7500 and traveling. But moments like these, and I've seen some of the greatest landscape photography at this show in the last couple of days. The amount of talent that has been on this stage is just amazing to me. Overwhelming, in fact, that I'm following some of the greatest photographers, I believe, who are out there in our industry today. Just great, great photography. I also love taking pictures of interiors. How many of you have said, I need a camera that can shoot in low light? Why? Because I shoot available light in interiors. This happened to be a shot from the D850 campaign. Uh, Nikon ambassador, Jerry Gihonis, was shooting D850 for us. And we were in this really cool house here in Las Vegas. And uh, I was walking around while he was shooting, doing my thing with D7500, covering this unusual architecture and this uh, interior. I also love macro photography. I don't know about you, but I'm very intrigued by uh, objects up close, whether they're natural in nature or they're, or they're man-made. So I love doing that. And I certainly love taking pictures of people. So why did I just tell you about architecture, landscape, and cityscape, and close-up, and interior work? It's because I believe that all of those things that I love to do are what you do naturally when you travel and take pictures. So, telling stories through photography. D7500 was being introduced in April of 2017, and I had a trip plan with my wife, Nancy, to go to Rome, Florence, and Venice. And I really wanted to take D7500 with me. It's a fantastic DSLR. It's a DX sensor camera, meaning it's got a crop sensor. It's a really compact camera, yet it's incredibly capable. It can shoot up to eight frames per second. It's got 4K video. It does auto bracketing. Things that I like to do when I'm out taking pictures. And most of all, my favorite part, it holds Nikkor lenses and Nikon speed lights. So I was golden. I knew I was going there. However. There was one kink in about what I was about to do, and that is that the camera wasn't announced yet. So I got permission from Nikon Corporation to take my camera, as long as nobody saw the camera, and I was revealing that I'm shooting with a, a Nikon D7500. So I taped up the camera, and I shot for three days in Italy until the camera was announced. On the third day, the camera was announced, I took the tape off the camera, and now I can walk around freely and shoot pictures. The camera's got amazing technology like Nikon SnapBridge, which allows me to tag images, send those images to my smartphone, which I did regularly while I was in Italy. And then I was socializing up to Facebook, up to Instagram, literally within minutes sometimes, or half hour, an hour, wherever I was in Italy, I was posting pictures with this brand new camera and telling the world, this is the new camera, I'm shooting with it, I'm in Italy. So, quick list for successful travel photography. A uh, checklist, excuse me. So what are my, my must-haves? First and foremost, I need a camera that can shoot in low light with really great image quality. 
check. Why check? Because the D7500 can shoot up to 51,200, and I've tested the camera, and I know the performance of the camera in its high ISO mode. Why? I told you before, right? I like shooting in interiors. I like shooting in low light. I was going to be traveling, walking around. I knew I was going to be shooting at night. Things like that, I want to be able to shoot and get great pictures in low light. Shoot tack sharp pictures of all the things I love to do. Again, check for me. This camera's got a great autofocus system. Rely on the camera's metering to get the shot right. Nikon has been a pioneer in this field for well over 20 years. This is the company that basically invented uh, metering using color, evaluative metering. How many of you out there remember cameras like the D5? Right Now today we have cameras that have 180,000 RGB pixels like our D5 and our D850 that can shoot amazing uh, and get incredible accurate uh, exposures and they're any light. I rely on these things and I know you do too. And I've got fantastic performance in a camera like D7500 using the built-in flash. It's why I like the camera. It's got the built-in pop-up flash. Sometimes when you're out traveling, I don't want to carry a lot of gear. I might carry a basic camera, one lens or two. I like the built-in flash that allows me to get those pictures that I want to get um, when I do want to augment the scene with flash. Packing extra batteries. I can't tell you how many people I talk to at trade shows like this where they've told me they've been traveling and they ran out of batteries and they didn't have an extra batteries. I always tell people, buy an extra battery or two if you're going traveling. I happen to travel with four batteries because as I'm charging my batteries overnight, I'm changing batteries out and swapping. I'm always using fresh batteries. I carry one in my pocket, one in my backpack, one in the camera at all times. Pack a lightweight, sturdy tripod. My wife was a little bit worried that I was packing a tripod with me. She said, we're going on vacation. I said, but I want to get shots in Italy that I had planned, and I know I needed to use a tripod to do it. There was no way around it. I had to use a tripod. OK, and experiment with new ways to see. Even though I'm on vacation, I wanted to experiment. I knew I was going to see things I had never seen before. So before you go on any trip, I advise you, and I know you do this. There's so many ways to do research today, right? Uh, one of them is to use a guidebook. Whenever I travel, I buy photos, I buy other guidebooks. I look and see what the popular, the most recommended places are. Don't, don't discount going to these places just because they've been photographed before. What you need to do is bring your unique vision when you go there. Browse photos on social media. Well, I'm always looking at social media, whether it's Flickr, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Instagram. There are so many great photographers out there. I want to see what they've done. What are people shooting when they go to Rome, Florence, Italy? I wanted to know what they were doing. Read web reviews. I knew we were going to go to the Vatican. I knew we were going to go to places like that. I wanted to find out what's the best time, how many people there are when I go there, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The web reviews tell you all that. People like to share those experiences. Create a shot list. Now, one of the things I like to do is create a shot list, but then I don't stick to it. But it gives me a basic guideline because, you know, life is full of surprises, right? And you know that when you go somewhere, whatever you have planned, it's going to rain. Whatever you have planned, it's going to be closed, right? Whatever you have planned, you don't have a wide enough lens or a close enough lens. So take the shot list, but keep in mind, you might veer a little left or right of that shot list. Look for special events. This was really cool. We, were, we happened to be going in April, and it was timed out that it would be for uh, the Jewish holidays of Passover and also uh, of Easter. And I knew we were going to the Vatican, and I knew we were going to Florence, and in Florence is one of the greatest churches in the world, the Duomo, and I knew that there was a special event there called the Festival of the Cart, where they shoot fireworks off in the morning to signify uh, the beginning of the harvest and, and the resurrection, right? So I said, I gotta go there. This has gotta be the coolest thing, and I think you're gonna agree when you see the photographs I took there. Okay, and set some goals for yourself. Some of those goals were, put down the camera. I'm with my wife, I am on vacation. Put down the camera sometimes and just enjoy the moment. You have to be able to do that. And I was able to do that, but I love taking pictures. So it's really hard for me to do that. Trust me when I tell you that. Okay, and also, what topics was I want to shoot when I went there? It's all the things I love to do. Nothing different than what I've told you already. So, you're out, you're going shooting, right? 
You have to know about the gear you're taking with you. You have to know how to navigate through the exposure modes of the camera. I know so many people who buy a camera right before they go on vacation, and then as they go on vacation, they don't know how to use the camera. It's crazy. Learn the camera you're shooting. Learn about the exposure modes. Learn about the camera's metering modes. The autofocus settings. I shoot autofocus, but I also shoot manual focus. I shoot single point autofocus. I shoot continuous autofocus. I use the autofocus based on the subject I'm photographing. And, and I think I have to know how to do that. ISO settings. I told you before, I like to shoot interiors, low light, know the camera's ISO. Know what your personal limits are for how high up you want to go in the ISO. For me, with D7500, I found out shortly from testing the camera that ISO 12800 gave me really clean pictures. So I knew under certain circumstances, if the light was extremely low, I can move that ISO up as high as 12800. OK, and of course, know what your flash settings are. Like I said, we had a great speaker here, Joe McNally, the other day. And Joe is a flashaholic. I use flash because not every scene can be taken with available light. Not every scene needs to be taken with high ISO. You need to bring a higher quality of light to your photographs. And that's what a flash is going to bring you. Don't be afraid to embrace using a speed light wherever you go. So selecting the right lenses. Got a trip to Italy. Over 10 days, I'm going to be in Italy. What lenses do you want to bring with you? I'm the senior product manager for Nikon. I'm a little different than you, you guys and gals out here, right? I have my pick of the litter. I can choose every lens we make, yet I didn't. I was very specific in taking two lenses. The 16 to 80 gave me the versatility. It's the equivalent of a 24 to 120 in full frame, and I like that focal range, wide angle to, to mild portrait lens. And I knew I was going to shoot a lot of uh, architecture and a lot of beautiful landscape work in Italy, and so I wanted an extreme wide angle. Extreme wide angles do a lot of different things for me, but they help me see differently as well. So the 10 to 24 and the 16 to 80 were my two go-to lenses. And here I am, you're looking at the Grand Canal, and I was on a boat traveling on the Grand Canal, and this is with the 10 to, uh, to 24 millimeter lens. So I know the importance of using these two lenses. So throughout the show, these are the only two lenses that you're going to see me using. They were small, they were light, they were fast, they were capable. That's why I chose them. So first rule of travel photography for me, wake up early, stay out late. I don't want to miss the sunrises. I don't want to miss the early morning. This shot that you're looking at that's behind here is from the airplane on the way over to Italy. You know, I was sleeping like everyone else on the plane. And then I woke up and I lifted up the, the shield on the window. And when I looked out, I saw fog rolling in the hills of Tuscany. And at first, I was like, wow, isn't that nice? And I went, it's got to be a photograph here. This is through the window of an airplane shooting at the fog rolling over Tuscany. So the great Jay Maisel said, there is no bad light. There's spectacular light and difficult light. It's up to you to use the light you have. And he said that 30 years ago, and I never forgot it. It's always, what light do you like to photograph in? To me, it's any light that's available. Staying up early, getting up early, staying out late. This is one of those getting up early shots. We got up early. We wanted to explore Rome, go to breakfast. It's about uh, 7 AM, walking the streets. Look how beautiful and soft the light is. Yet there are some uh, nice shadows as well. So you get some really different qualities of light when you go out really, really early. OK? Staying to that motto. Here's a shot of, uh, it's called Isla Tiber, the island of Tiber. It's the Tiber River that's going into Rome, surrounds Rome. And this little island is there. I was crossing the bridge with my wife. We were coming back from, a, from an early dinner. And this was a sunset shot. So once again, the high ISO, all the great things on the camera, knowing the metering mode, how to get a shot like this. OK, now in Venice, the light was sweet. But you know what? You've all got these settings on your cameras, white balance. And white balance is one of those great settings that I wish I would have had in the film days, but it was never there, right? If I shot daylight film in the film era, I had to shoot in daylight. Or my pictures came out too yellow. If I shot incandescent film uh, in very incandescent light, it was corrected. But if I shot in daylight, it came out blue. Well, that still holds true if you're shooting daylight on a digital camera or incandescent on a digital camera. 
It's knowing how to use it and when to use it. Sometimes I use it to correct, sometimes I use it in a way not meant to be used. So here, it was twilight in Venice. The light was really soft and beautiful, but I knew when I looked at the photograph, the first photograph I took, it was an okay photograph, but it was missing something. So what I did was I turned the camera's white balance setting to incandescent. So incandescent, or tungsten, allowed the daylight to go blue but it corrected the light on this little kiosk, and I knew I had the moment. Now, when you're out shooting, I don't know, a lot of people take one shot, they take a picture, and then they walk away. In shots like this, I don't. I wait there, I shoot, I try to see what's unfolding in front of the camera. I'll shoot many, many pictures. If something is worth taking a picture of, it's worth taking many pictures of it to get the right shot you want. And that's what I do, even when I'm on vacation, much to my wife's dismay. But, you get shots like this, and you walk away with shots like this. You do it in camera. The goal for me, whatever I do, try to get as much in camera as possible. Who wants to be sitting at a computer later on, post-processing everything you shot? And I know it's a reality of our industry and the cameras and everything we do. You have to try to get it right in camera. Okay, now here's a shot. This is one of those where I knew I wanted to take this picture. I've seen pictures of Rome, the Vatican, all this stuff my whole life. I brought the tripod with me, but I also do a technique called HDR. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that, but what it does is HDR means high dynamic range. And the way I do that, that technique is I bracket my exposures, meaning that I take a series of pictures at different exposures, and then I layer them together, and this time I do use software. And I have to use a, a, a tripod to do that. So these are night exposures, about eight to 10 seconds each, at three EV uh, differences, so three exposure, minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, plus three, etc. Then I layered them together to get this shot. Talk to people. How many of you just take pictures of snapshots and you just take a picture and you walk away? I find you get the best pictures when you talk to people, right? And people relax, they let their guard down when you talk to them. And so it's much easier to do that. So, uh, my wife and I, we tried I think we broke a record. We probably hit every gelato shop in Italy while we were there. I don't know about you, but the taste of gelato was just so good, and there it was just fantastic. So uh, we went to this gelato shop. We were both sitting on a curb, and there must have been 50, 75 people sitting on the curb with us just eating gelato. And I was listening to the conversations about, ooh, this is really great, great. And so I saw this guy, and I started talking with him, and I said, would you mind me getting a shot of you. And I said, what do you want me to do? I said, show me the gelato. And he just went like this, and I got the shot. Really easy. Okay, so this is Roberto. I met Roberto in a cheese shop. Walked into the shop in Trastevere. Okay, Trastevere is one of these great places in Rome. It's like the heart of the foodie district in Rome. And we went into this cheese shop, and this guy was so accommodating, explaining all the different cheeses and things like that. I asked if I could shoot his portrait. He said, what do you want me to do? And I said, be among the G's. And he went behind the counter, and we got this shot. It's, it's, it's really a silly shot, isn't it? But you know what? I couldn't have gotten it if I didn't talk to him first. It just made the whole moment. These two guys, Valentino on the left and his dad, own a restaurant called La Sagra del Vino. We ate there, fantastic food, and this man was so accommodating, he came to our table the whole night, telling us his experiences living in the United States, and so on. I, I did multiple portraits of him and his dad in a crowded restaurant just by talking and, and being friendly. These two guys, my wife and I were lost. We were in Florence. I was lost. Didn't know where I was going. So, hey, gelato shop. We went there and we had one, you know, probably our 10th or 12th of that day. And these two guys were there. I met them. They gave us directions. I shot portraits of them. Really easy to do. Don't be afraid to break those barriers. Talk to people. Now, this is a shot with the 10 to 24. I love the intimacy of a lens like that because it's ultra wide and it forces you to get closer to objects. And I love this type of street photography rather than you know with a telephoto lens from across the street because I like the intimate nature of being close like that and being able to talk to people. Now here's a couple of shots where I didn't talk to people and I used the 16 to 80 at its 80 millimeter setting because I wanted the candid nature of the shots. And you have to look for these moments, you really do. So when I wasn't eating gelato, I was photographing people eating gelato, and this kid was adorable. 
Um, smartphones, how many people everywhere you go? I just thought it was exclusive to the United States. No, everybody's on their smartphone. People walk around with a smartphone. You, you, you bump into people because people aren't looking around. This girl didn't even know I was taking a picture. I must have shot 30 different pictures of her. I was actually laying on my stomach right behind her and took a picture with the tent. She had no idea I was doing this stuff. All right, so look at the world differently. This is a shot of the Duomo. So Mark Twain once said, 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things that you did do, right? So, I, I, you know, I take similar pictures. It's technique. You strive to earn that technique, but I want to be able to do things differently. And being relaxed and on vacation, not at work, gives me that opportunity to do that. So that was one of my goals, look at the world a little differently. Little did I know that when I went to Italy, the incredible amount of looking up I would be doing because of all of the incredible churches that we had visited. I, I, I thought the Vatican was gonna be the highlight of my, my church tour in Italy. The Vatican was certainly amazing, but I went into uh, so many different beautiful houses of worship and looking up was part of the experience. This is in the Vatican. This is the 10 to 24. Did a couple of things, number one, there were crowds everywhere. A crowd picture is different than this, and I did shoot pictures of the crowds, right? But to me, the symmetry of looking up like this and looking at the architecture and the artwork and the beautiful light that was in there, this was shot at 3,200 ISO, all right? 3,200, and with a 10 to 24, look at the beautiful quality of this. The Duomo, again, from a different angle. So this is one of those things I told you about. Special events, right? This was called Festival of the Car. So here we go to the church. The festival was going to be at 11 in the morning. My wife and I got there at 9, thinking we would be the first ones there. There were about 30,000 people there in the square. So I knew I couldn't get the prime spot, and I was forced to use the tilting LCD screen of my camera to shoot over everybody, because I couldn't hold the camera to my eye, right? So I was able to shoot over everybody by tilting the camera. So the fireworks start to go off at about 11 a.m. I'm there at 9 o'clock, and the sun was, if you're looking at this photograph, was on this side of Duomo. But for the next two hours, I was watching as the sun kept moving in this direction. And wouldn't you know it, you know, luck favors the prepared, right? I know the camera, I know the settings, I have the right lens, I know what I'm gonna do. Now comes the luck part. Fireworks go off, I take this picture, and I'm like, it's really not working for me. All I did was tilt the camera higher and had this moment. It was right out of the Da Vinci Code. Angels and demons, it was spectacular. And look at the sun. The sun was right over the, this beautiful area of the church and the smoke mixed with the sun, and it was flaring out, really, really spectacular. It was great live, it was great getting the shot. Create a sense of scale. A lot of times people take pictures when they travel of big buildings, um, uh, statues, things like that, and you really have no uh, idea of how big they are. So you have to put people or something that you know, physical size into the photograph to create that sense of scale, right? So here, in St. Mark's Square in Florence is this incredible church. And in the church, it's the burial ground for uh, Da Vinci, Michelangelo, Dante, and, and Galileo. When I heard that, it was like, you, get, you gotta be kidding, right? This statue is a statue of Dante. You have no idea how big this is, right? It looks, eh, it looks okay, right? I asked my wife to step into the picture. And now this gives you an idea of just how massive this, this sculpture really is. So that's the idea. Put someone in the photograph to create a sense of scale, right? Going through the Jewish ghetto in, in Venice, people milling about and walking about, it just adds a little to that photograph and gives you that idea of where you are, creating that sense of scale. Here's that shot. You can see all the people in front of me, right? With uh, the fireworks device that was being carted around. And then inside uh, uh, St. Um, um, uh, William Church in, in Rome, um, 
it, it's unbelievable. The architecture, the color, so beautiful. Again, low light, 6400 ISO. I wouldn't have thought of doing these types of photographs even five, six years ago. But the processors in today's cameras, the lens quality of today's lenses, just amazing. You have to try things. Don't walk away saying, I, I don't want to try it. I don't think the quality is good. Try it. It's, it's a photograph. Just so happens that these cameras work really, really well in these situations. So I'm just, I, you got you to press those boundaries to get the shot. And again, we stayed an extra 15 minutes just so I can get this type of photograph. I stayed there. I waited. I watched what people were doing. Wanted to be respectful. I don't want to walk into the middle of people you know, saying prayers and things like that. So I found an angle that I wouldn't be in their way, and I got this shot, this overall shot. Shoot in local markets. Do you need to do that? I do that in the States. I do that everywhere I go. I love local market shooting because they're full of color, people, they're always active. You always get really, really cool shots. So any Anthony Bourdain fans out there, I'm, I'm a big Anthony Bourdain fan. Think of food, culture, people, and landscape are all absolutely inseparable. And this is where they all come together. The food, wherever you're at, whether it's in your local town, whether you're going state to state, you're traveling through Europe or Asia or anywhere you go, go to the local markets, talk to the people. This is where you'll find the, the greatest experiences in photography. In a butcher shop, in a cheese shop, in a gelato store. You didn't think I was going to leave that out, did you, right? So gelato everywhere. It's intrigued. I love this stuff. Shoot manually. This is got that part about knowing your camera, right? You don't take a photograph, you make it. The way to make the photograph is to shoot manually. Try different things. So here's a shot in Florence um, in a gardens area above the town. I popped up the flash. Remember I said I like the flash? Popped up the flash, take the photograph, fill in the, uh, the wisteria in the foreground, and expose for the background manually. The Vatican, backlit fountain. Creating a sense of place. Which of my photographs is my favorite? The one I'm going to take tomorrow. I never knew who originated that phrase until I was doing research for my program, and it was Imogen Cunningham. Right? So creating a sense of place. What is it about the place that in one photograph can tell you that story of where you are? What do you want to tell the viewer, right? So St. Mark's Square in Venice, right, with Campanile, everything going on around it. This says Venice, doesn't it? Gondolas, churches, everything in one shot. This is also early morning during a really big uh, rainstorm that they were having. Shoot monochrome. I love these cameras because I think in black and white. I don't convert in black and white in a digital darkroom. I like thinking black and white and shooting black and white. So walking around, look for the moments that work in black and white. I do it wherever I'm at, whether it's a, a scene like this or whether that, that first scene, whether it's architecture, landscape, whether it's sports, whether, whatever it is, I, I like to shoot black and white tells a different story, and certainly develop a theme. So I noticed that as I was going throughout Italy, the one thing I kept coming back to was pictures of food. Everywhere I went, whether we were eating in restaurants or walking around, food is a big part of the culture in Italy. So this is why I loved the theme of food. So taking pictures of my food that I had, walking around, seeing what other people, shops, I would just walk into a shop. If I saw this shot on the right, this was a local store. I was walking down the street. This table was set like this. I just walked, like I said, I'm fearful. I walked right into the restaurant. I asked if I could take pictures. They said yes, and I took this photograph. All right? But different types of food wherever you go, whether it's a local shop, a local market, a fish store, a fish market. There was great fish markets in Venice. You do all that. So with just two simple lenses, the 16 to 80, the 10 to 24, the built-in flash of my D7500, and all the great features on a camera like that, I was comfortable, I was able to take photographs, I was able to tag the photographs, transfer the photographs from the D7500 to my smartphone, and tell the story of my trip to Italy almost in real time. Friends and family on Facebook saw what I was doing, what I was posting, and trust me, I'm, I'm a little bit crazy on Facebook when I'm posting pictures. I don't just post one. Sometimes you'll see me post 20 or 30 at a time. All right? I want people to experience what I'm experiencing and love doing that. So, biggest thing to do, travel safe. Use your common sense. You know, protect your gear, protect yourself, right? You always hear about this kind of stuff. Just 
use your common sense, and that's what I do. Talking to people helps. Looking like you know what you're doing, instead of like you're a tourist walking around looking at your camera, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Just be mindful of all that, and you'll come back with great photographs. And also, it helps when you have a great Nikon camera. So hopefully all of you out there do, and all of you out there in TV land do as well. So have a great rest of the CES show, and thank you for coming. See you next time. Ladies and gentlemen, Lindsay Silverman brings a passion to photography like no other. So again, if you uh, do not know this, almost every program that we've live streamed over four days will be available at NikonUSA.com slash live, so you can go back and watch them. On day one, we had an epic program with a U.S. astronaut that spent a year in space on the International Space Station, Captain Scott Kelly. That was an amazing program. But there's been photography on landscape, portrait, wildlife, and more. So if you're interested in any genre of photography, we have covered it here at the show. At Nikon, we believe education is so important, but inspiration and motivation is equally as important. We thank you guys for tuning in. We thank you for coming to the show, and have a great weekend. See you next year. <laughs>